Good morning. This is born in Nova Scotia. It's uh, Tuesday or Monday. Can't remember. Anyway, it's the 20th. Um, we're actually uh, a cloudy day today. I have my usual... Um, there she is out there. My uh, audience, as you would say. And my cat's somewhere else. She's actually... Uh, taking a break from sitting with me. She's over on the windowsill. So let's see if I can get this just right so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I've got some bowls behind me that I'm in the process of decorating. Um, and I, this is the stencil removing mugs that I was showing you how I threw the other day as well. Um, so I'm gonna stencil remove these so you can see it. It's kind of relaxing doing this part of the job. I have a light that shines right over the top so I can get some sort of very vague shadow. Um, but on there, there are about 10 pieces of paper that are used to mask out in this process. So I have to find one usually, and then after they've got one, it's a little easier. So there's a foot down there, I think. Can you see that? Just about, I guess. There's the foot. See how it just lifts up? Now, if it's a black one, it's the top layer. But it was a striped one, which is where I airbrushed the little stripes in. I always try to put one jumping through the handle when I do mugs. I always did that because I always thought when, when you buy commercial decorated mugs, they never have anything through the handle because they use a decal, which is only easy to put around. So I've always done that because I like to do something different. Now this clay is fairly dry, so it's at the point where it's still okay to remove, but any more than this and it would be really hard and you'd get flaky edges and the paper would be tearing because it wouldn't be able to be strong enough to lift the actual uh, clay. So it's about timing. Right, there you go. I have uh, about 23 I think of these to stencil remove. Now there should be one white one just there. I try to remember where I put them because sometimes it's really hard to find them. When I did the plate the other day, it was very hard because the plate was wet. These are a little drier, so it makes it a little easier. Oh, I didn't lose any. Isn't that fun? This is the reward for doing all the tedious layering and stenciling. I can't really photograph doing my time with these because they literally take an entire day to do. Um, it's, it comes down to just layers of clay that have to dry in between the application because you can't put the paper masks down when the, the clay is still wet. You have to wait till it dries each time. And it can take two to three hours between applying each layer. So it's just not possible to videotape that. On humid days, it can take two days as well. On a good drying day, the layers of clay will slip, will dry in between in about two to three hours. But you know, you get a humid summer day and you're sitting waiting and waiting. And, and I've actually had to do them the following day especially since we're on the ocean here, so things actually uh, take a long time to dry. You know, literally underneath my building is the ocean, so the building sits on stilts. Now I know there's one just about there, I think. But if you put a poke, a hole in, you know, you, you'll end up, what I used to call them, bullet holes. Um, because if you poke and there isn't a paper stencil there, you've kind of put a hole in your decoration which would be hard to hide. Yeah, to, you can, this is a, the day after they had that big shooting in Nova Scotia, so we're still hearing about that on the news throughout the day. Very strange, random act there. Not Nova Scotian at all, because it's very peaceful up here. Yeah, there's about 900,000 people in the province of Nova Scotia. Um, it's almost an island, 
Um, we literally have one access by a land, a, a thin piece of land from New Brunswick to Nova Scotia, which global warming will probably take away and it'll be an island again. Because when you drive over that little piece of land, it's you're right, there's water really close to you. Now, another problem with stenciling is you get bleeding, which I don't because I've done this so long that um, I'm pretty good at catching those. But when you put paper down, if you don't seal it properly, so it's not a matter of just placing a piece of paper and that's it. You have to rub it down completely, make it stick to the surface, which is why the piece has to be fairly firm when you're doing this. You can't do it to a freshly thrown piece of clay. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's watching these videos from the UK, but um, I like watching videos by goldmark.ca, no, .com. Yeah, goldmarkart.com, I think the website is. So check out those videos. They're really good. They're very professionally done as well. So there we go. Got one more yellow one to do. Yeah, those bowls over there are just in that drying process. I've, I've got the black layer of clay on them for the black cats that will be on those bowls. And, um, and I'm just waiting for them to dry. Yeah, almost touched the high five. There you, go. you have to make sure you, you're really good at the first little poke that you do. You don't want to make a mistake. Yeah, I grew up in Yorkshire, in England. Um, I don't have a Yorkshire accent at all. I was born in Scotland. And um, I moved to uh, North America uh, when I was 30 years old. I was a school teacher in Kent. Uh, I, went, I taught at Churchfields first in Chatham, and then, no, wait a minute, it was Highfields in Chatham, and then Churchfields in Sittingbourne. Um, so I taught pottery in those schools. And then in 1985, um, I'd been teaching for five years, uh, my mother-in-law got sick and we had to go back, well, we didn't have to go back, we went back to the United States where my wife was from. Uh, she was born in Michigan. And uh, her name is Jacqueline Cohen. She um, is an artist in her own right. And she kept her maiden name because of the art thing, basically. and. Um, so people can still find her from the original pieces she did before I even met her. But, uh, but we went to Ohio in 1985. And um, we were there for nine years. Um, and I set up a little studio in a basement first. Um, well, actually a car garage, I guess, first. And then, uh, and then a basement studio. So I went the normal route of everybody having a tiny... Well, my studio in Kent was a tiny place, about eight by nine feet. And um, and uh, well, that's gonna be too big. I have to take off. But uh, but I you know changed my studios almost every year at that point. Um, the uh, garage lasted about a year, and then the basement studio lasted about a year, um, and then I rented a space, and we called ourselves Fifth Street Studios um, in Columbus, Ohio. And I made my living doing craft fairs for a, a long time, well, 27 years, I guess. Um, first of all, based for my studio in Ohio, uh, doing all the Midwest shows down there. Uh, Columbus Arts Festival, Ann Arbor, uh, Boston Mills, Game Park, I mean, a whole bunch of shows. Um, and I went over to the, uh, I guess it was uh, Washington, D.C. There's one there and I can't see it, so I've got to be very careful. Just there. Um, so a bunch of ones tried some Sugarloaf Mountain craft fairs. They were very profitable for a, quite a long time. And um, and then after what was it, 1994, we went to upstate New York, 
I had a friend who lived there, Bill Harris, um, and um, and we moved not far away from him uh, in a little village called High Falls, um, and that we stayed there 17 years, and I continued to do the craft fairs, but we opened a, a retail showroom right on our studio as well, um, and I've always sold to other galleries uh, too. I mean, we did the American Craft Council show for a long time. Um, and uh, I sold to probably over a hundred galleries at one point. So, um, oh, I wonder if all of those are still still going too, because that was a long time ago. I had a really nice gallery in Upper Michigan called Tamarack that we sold to, and uh, I think his name was John. I can't I, if I remember right, but um, who owned that gallery? Um, and then Charleston Art Pottery, um, fireworks in Seattle, um, but a lot of you know, a lot of galleries basically. And uh, and then you know when we got opened the the, the retail showroom in New York, um, it was uh, in between four restaurants, which um, meant there were already people coming to that area. Um, but it never really uh, took off as a, I think because there was so, so there was so much there being close to New York City, only an hour and a half, two hours away. Um, but, um, but it was, there was, it was never, it never replaced the craft fairs that we used to do. So we continued to do craft fairs. And uh, there was a whole Hudson Valley Pottery Trail we helped set up there with Cater Britton Shaw and uh, Joe Triplo, Steve Fabrico, Ashworks Pottery, um, Zoya Jikintoff, I think she's still there and Cater is still there in that area. But um, So we had a whole community of potters there. But uh, in the end we, um, my wife is Canadian um, and so she was Canadian American. And, um, and we visited up here and we just knew when we visited here that we wanted to live here. It's one of those things you go somewhere and you just know and all that because it's right on the water and it's quiet. Um, but there's there is an, a, you know, an influx of uh, tourists every summer, a lot of whom own houses here, um, which maybe this year because of lockdown we won't be seeing. But, but anyway, it... Um, it was just a beautiful place. So we came to visit a couple of times uh, in uh, 2010. And, um, and we found this property on the internet um, and we just came up straight away. It was a long way to come to see a property, but we arranged to see several others, but this was the one we thought we were interested in. And as soon as we saw it, we, we knew. And that uh, took about two days to put an offer in and and accepted and then we went through the process of emigrating here. Uh, Canada likes people who are setting up small businesses uh, to move here. They like big businesses too but they are they are very welcoming to people who want to invest in Canada. And you know considering the small population compared to the United States we've done better here than we ever did in the United States. And I think that's due to a, um, an influx of people every summer that are new, totally new customers every year. So craft fairs are not part of our life at all anymore. We, just, we basically sell here and I do a little bit of mail order. Um, I have a couple of websites in my last video I was showing the websites. So there are two, there's westcoatbellpottery.com, which is an old website that um, we actually, uh, oh, I've had that since the 90s, I suppose. And, um, and uh, it's basically a historical record website at the moment showing what we've done in the past. And we've tried a lot of things. So um, I leave it there so people can use it as a reference. It only costs a couple of hundred dollars a year to keep it, so, but, um, and you know people 
can still order pieces on that website if I have any interest in making that piece again I'll make it for you these pieces are actually because I don't, a lady ordered a bunch of plates with these cats on the other day oh, a couple of weeks ago now I guess but uh, the plates are, are drying and um, I showed a video of those too and so I haven't done this design this tech this technique for a while It's like learning to swim. You know, you could leave it for a while and just jump right back in. This will be the last one, and then I'll turn the camera off if you're not asleep already. Yeah, craft fairs are something that, um, it's a good way as a beginner, if you're a beginning potter, just to try a few, get a bit of feedback on what you're making. Um, the big shows are very expensive to do, so that's a little different ball game altogether. But if you just want to get some feedback, um, find a nice little show where you've seen other craftspeople exhibiting and keep your booth fee low, just so you're not in debt doing a show. You need to build a nice display though, shelving or pedestals. I think there's a, it's easy to forget a tail or a foot and just leave it on there. If, it, if you leave it on it burns out, but it leaves the surface of clay above where it was and you end up with a really rough edge where that stencil was. So you have to find them. The paper burns away, but there's a layer of clay over the top of the paper, basically. Alrighty, well that's uh, ten of them, I suppose. Three, six, eight, nine of them, yeah. But um, so you get the idea. Get a real close up. You can see the edge where the paper was. So these have a texture to them. There you go. All right, that's not too long. Half, fifteen minutes. No, seventeen minutes. There you go. Alrighty, well, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia from West Coat Bell Pottery um, signing off, and uh, I hope you have a great week. Thanks very much.